And now she's out in the lineup with another lap on the Challenger Series. Sally Fitzgibbons got off to an early start with this. Yeah, this has been characteristic of the last few rounds for Sally. It seems to be her game plan, just not wasting any time, not wanting to be lost out there in the lineup. Bit of kind of horizontal surfing to set this thing up whilst it comes into the inside. Then she starts to go a little bit more top to bottom. Bit of a slow pace to that wave for her, but she's still able to get that quicker kind of start and lay into a few more open face cars. The thing just keeps on giving. I heard Bugs talking about it before too. It's just they just keep rolling and rolling all the way through to Green Mount there. Great way to start. Katie Simmer has got a 2.7 for her opening ride. Yeah, this is just a little score. Similar kind of horizontal surfing. You can see in her stance. Feeling pretty comfortable. Straight arm thing going on too. Katie now linking into her first nice looking turn. Bit of a down carb connected together. Then goes up into the lip. Now out onto the open face with a huge wrap back into the foam, hits that power section and it gives her that boost into the next bit of corner to work with. She's now going to be real patient, bit of straight arm, bit of straight legs there, standing tall and then hitting the power, making everything look so easy for Katie Simmers. It's going to be really exciting to see who gets the upper hand. Yeah, big opening carve first maneuver, just handles the wobble and bubble quite well, has to touch the face a little bit there to gain some more stability. Two stages that cutty, but just gets back to that kind of solid rail work there. And she's just really casual, really, really quiet body-wise in between those turns. As we take a look now at Katie Simmers, she already dropped an 8.33 and had another opportunity here. Yeah, loose and free over that top turn. Two stage down the face card there because she had to kind of readjust for the lumps. But I just like how quiet her upper body is, how deep she gets into that rebound as well and effortlessly she just does she's kind of like john john she really got kind of through it up there but a bit late on that end section shannon sally's fourth wave here scores coming through now yeah big snap to open up nothing else just after that though like critical snap really far great scoring potential on offer as we are in finals day for the boost mobile gold coast pro caitlin simmers currently putting sally fitzgibbons in a combination situation sally now driving hard off the bottom digging that rail in with a great looking carb to start things off kicks back into the foam now building speed and momentum as she gets a good looking section opening up in front of her hits it throws those arms high Positions around a big section and lays into the rail. Great looking wave opening up and a lot of opportunity now for Fitzgibbons. She hasn't had a wave with this much size yet in the semifinals. Big float to continue down the line. She makes it past that little corner, transitions into the lip again, and this wave may have even more to give as she goes down past the free surfers at Rainbow Bay. It's just the same that we saw from Nikki Van Dyke really getting to unleash down the end. She's going to take her a long time to make it back to the top of the lineup. Just off-timed it. Here's the replay of this whole wave now. Now lock in. This is a marathon replay. There's a lot of work going on. You got this, Jess. Yeah, there's, there's a turn in the middle. I'm just going to wait to see. I think it's this one. Yeah, that one. I feel like she needs... She was looking for the projection and she and she got really light on her feet to come over the top of it, but she was just kind of a little bit too late. But she, either way, she got to work critically surfing down the end. There's the thrill. Nearly a generation between these two women to know the progression that they're both still pushing within the sport. Kitty goes down after a big wrap on that. And it was a great matchup for a young competitor like Katie to find herself walking in second to a woman with so much experience behind her in Sally Fitzgibbons. Now with a heavy drop, she'll kick out of that without any scoring potential on offer. And I'm sure that in the future, we're gonna see these two in a, in a few more great matchups, especially considering that they're both in the mix on the Challenger Series. Now Sally with another opportunity. Remember, she's chasing a huge score. Great rail work to start off on. Horizontal surfing. She's gonna look for that little lip line where she can break through and bring in that point of difference within her surfing. 
projects through the lip. Goes in for a second check to gain some speed. And goes in for a good finish to read through. I almost think she may have been thinking about a reverse on that end section. I feel like that's why she took off on a wave of this size as well. Something smaller, but that would offer her a good ramp. Yeah, surely she's seen uh, the size of Katie's waves and that she's, she's clocking into that scoring potential. Look at the line she takes here. She gets a little lift over this section. That's what I'm talking about with that handwork. And then she just kind of cuts that short. She Going big out the back on those first couple of maneuvers. She's going to have to kick out because Katie Simmers Jeez. had priority. This is an interesting situation because Sally Fitzgibbons did cross over the path of Katie dropping in. There it is, Shannon. Priority interference determined. Sally Fitzgibbons on Katie Simmers. So Sally loses her second scoring wave. She's now sitting with a single wave score of a 7.67. Will not have the second there. And Katie Simmers locks herself a spot into the final.